Well, thank you very much. You know, I just uh, visited some universities in the States and here in France and some other audiences. My impression is that the people are so depressed. You know, they think the world is a mess. You have the Iranians building a bomb. You have the fanatic religions trying to take over the Middle East. You have a new China. You have a different Russia. Wherever you move around, it's full of problems and troubles, and people really don't know what's happening, what is the future. Are we going to live in a world full with uh, nuclear bombs and missiles? May I say from the very beginning, in my judgment, the world is not an MS. The world is pregnant with a new age. And what we're really seeing is a transition. Like every transition, it's full of pains, of questions, of changing images, changing bodies, changing outlooks. But you know, the Stone Age is over, not because there are no more stones. It's over because there is no more age. Finished. And we can see the end of such an age. And you people of the internet are really trying to give birth to this sort of a new age. You are, if I can say so, the midwife of this process. In French, by the way, they have a more beautiful name. They call it la femme sage, the wise women that helps to deliver a new child to our time. And really, the internet has revolutionized. I shall just say a few words why I think so. A, you liberated us from the need to invest a great effort in order to remember things. Why should we remember? The past is not so brilliant. It's full of troubles, of wars. Not only that, why should we waste our intellectual energies to remember when the internet or the computer can remember in your place? Buy a Google and stop remember. You can get all the information about the past. I think the task of a human being nowadays is not to remember, but to imagine, to create, to discover. Today we don't make a living from what we had or from what we remember, but from what we can discover. And we're just at the beginning of the new age. So let's change our efforts from a traditional memory to intellectual imagination. That will enrich our life. Then also I believe that the internet saves a lot, a lot of time. You don't go, have to go to the banks and you don't, don't have to go to the stores and you don't have to go to the airports. Really, it's time saving. And since our life is so short, why waste it on unnecessary efforts? It's a great thing. And uh, then again, <laughs> the internet is free of prejudice, prejudices. It's open, it's free. And maybe the most important task of the internet is to bring in a young generation in the future. The internet really is the best teacher of our children. My impression is that the young people stopped reading papers, even stopped re watching television. They have an internet. And if they have five minutes, they can do it with the internet in five minutes. If they have five hours, they spend five hours, occasionally for romantic purposes, but otherwise for a more serious one. 
and uh, you can get today's schools by internet. You can have the best professors uh, enabling to provide their lectures to an unlimited audience. Yesterday night I met with a, one of the leaders of Nigeria who comes from a very poor region. And he told me that in his poor region, all schools are already connected with internet. Africa, or this sort of education, modern education, would never arrive in Africa, wouldn't it be for the internet? And you know better than I do that this is just the beginning. Now when I say one age is over and another age is being born, let me say a word, what is the age which is disappearing? And what is the age that is arriving? The most important change is, is that states, countries, borders, governments are no longer too important. They were important when we were making our living from the land. The most important branch of the previous economy was cultivating the land, natural resources. That forced us to divide the globe into lands, to put in frontiers, to declare sovereignties, to defend the land, to extend the land, and for that purpose to build armies, to go to war, to spend a lot of money on arms. And actually the previous history was written with red ink, wars and wars and wars, again to defend the piece of land that you have or to enlarge it. The minute that science and technology took over the future of our life and became the source of our wealth, what do you need borders? You cannot put border, borders on science, it's nonsense. You cannot have armies conquering wisdom. They cannot, neither can they defend. And you cannot actually have governments controlling the economy. Because the minute the economy became an economy without borders, without land, without armies, you know, every day, a trillion and a half trillion dollars are changing hands. There is no government on the world that has the slightest influence about the flow of money. Where is the money going to land? Even the United States cannot give order to global money where to land. So governments have budgets, they don't have money. The money is in the hands of the global companies that have money but don't need budgets. That they don't have to go to make politics and to argue, even they don't have to be popular. Because governments with ministers, every minister to the best of my, my knowledge, would like to be very popular. And if you want to be popular, you lose the freedom of action. You're so crazy to be popular that you forget why you became a politician. And then governments are good for war and poor for peace for the very same reason. They're good for war because if you're being attacked, the, nations, or the nation is united, so is the government. But when it comes to peace, the politics is divided. Not because there are people for peace and people are against peace, but the division is not about the principle of peace, but about the cost of peace. So one political party will say, give back 100 percent. Other will say, 80 percent. The third will say, 60 percent. And if you say 100 percent, you're not very popular. If you say 60 percent, you can get more votes. 
And uh, as a result, the politicians are negotiating peace with themselves. They don't pay attention to the enemy. They're so busy collecting the support. And they have not enough chances to convince their people to make the full move, the full step. It's very unpopular. Because some of you will come from another part and says, what the hell are you doing? Why are you making so many concessions? Why are you selling your country down uh, to earth? 